Greetings! I'm Epictetus, and this is Epic Tech. Today we are here with Alice, the maker of the Whale King, which you may have seen on the front page of the workshop, but you also may have seen as part of my current series on Space Engineers. It's quite an impressive project. So, Alice, what was it like making this thing? Um... A lot of headache to get curves and angles in space engineers. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't really do those very well, does it? Not really. So this is based off of an anime series, right? Yeah, it's based off of a fairly obscure Zoid in the well, in the Zoid series. Um, a big transport ship slash creature called the Whale King. Okay. Did you, did you say creature? Um, yeah, the lore is kind of weird in Zoids. Like, they're they're living mechanical creatures. Okay, that sounds really cool. But we're here to actually look at the creation in Space Engineers, not necessarily look up the lore. So what do you say we take a quick tour? I want to look at the outside first, and then we'll go to the yeah. inside. Well, so first of all, I mean, like... The exterior is as close as I could get it in Space Engineers with, you know, the limitations on angles and blocks and such. Um, I also tried to keep it as vin close to vanilla as possible. I mean... There are the, two uh, mods on this, and yeah. that is the, um, obviously the wing mod that allows you to actually have functional wings in Space Engineers. Mm -hmm. And um, those were actually necessary to get these engine pods down here. Um, without that mod, the, the engines in the front and the back of the little pod will fall off. So they're holding those on. Um, and then obviously the wings themselves just look better when they're smooth rather than square and blocky. But the other thing you have is the tiered thrusters. Yeah, so the vanilla thrusters, um, the ship is so big and heavy even just when it's empty that It'll fly with vanilla thrusters, but it won't make it to space because the atmospheric engines will cut out before the ions, obviously, and then you'll run out of hydrogen fuel before you make it to where the ions are self-sufficient. Also, even with hydrogen, you can't quite make it. Not to mention yeah. that some of the... <laughs> even the largest thrusters in Space Engineers aren't large enough to match the look of this ship in my opinion yeah yeah so it's i mean because this is huge it, it's 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 deceptively huge it doesn't look as big as it really is and we'll see that when we get to the inside of the ship just how huge this is actually if we go up to the cockpit here or the bridge really you can see just how huge the inside of this thing is i mean the there's there's you know, space for days exactly i mean i'm looking inside and, and we'll get to this when we get to the interior but there's just row upon row of passenger seats in there it's just and that's just because i didn't really have anything else to put in there obviously to get certain angles i used rotors like right here on this like upswept part of the wing oh i didn't even notice that hang on where you said rotors where this wing section oh. is on a rotor. Oh, you're right. Oh, okay. And I assume that's locked so that we're not, <laughs> Yeah. you know, defying the laws of physics. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you don't lock it, it'll flap about in the wind, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, and then I embedded decoys into it because I mean, even decoys. in the lore, the Whale King is not a combat ship. It has defenses, but it, it's not for frontline combat. Okay, yeah, I see that. So there's lots of decoys. I guess there's three per wing. Is that what it is? Or mm -hmm. And then there's a lot more in the back. Space Engineers has landing gear, um, and yeah. you've got two of those up in the front. This is mm -hmm. more of a uh, just kind of a way to balance the ship and... And this is, is this like in the lore? Is this the landing gear? Um, not quite. So in the lore, it has a massive like foot that is on a single arm that kind of just swings out and back. 
Um, I figured in Space Engineers that a single arm rotor base landing gear wouldn't really work. It I does weird things, yeah. I mean, it, yeah, honestly, yeah. <laughs> Space Engineers, you, you kind of have to expect some weird things no matter what. But still, this looks amazing. And mm -hmm. I love the way that you actually like connected one piston to another using these... The blast door blocks? Thank you. Blast door blocks. Mm -hmm. And so, credit yeah. where credit's due. Uh, I got that inspiration from Splitsy's uh, survival series where he uses them to make elevators and such. Now this back yeah. area I'm curious about, it's just wide open. Is that part of... Is that um, by design? Yeah, it's artistic inspiration. Um, okay. So on the actual Whale King, it has a little cone that has five different thrusters in it. Um, and that's that's the, all the forward thrust it has other than the two engines in the front. Um, but obviously that's not going to work with space engineers. Uh, yeah. Oh, I just noticed all your hydrogen tanks out here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Got a few of those. Yeah. Good like grief. I said, it's not meant for combat. <laughs> nope, nope. Uh, so up here in the front, there is a tiny little button hidden under the chin. Right oh, there here. is a button? There yep. is a button. Okay. You want to go ahead and Maybe press that center. button? <laughs> I love this part. Bam. So this is entirely made up of small blocks, and I'm seeing all these small block tires in here. Is there a reason for those other than just texture? Um, well, originally, this ramp came from an older build I had that was a, a cargo plane, and it used uh, modded shutter windows in the holes, but those obviously aren't vanilla for small grids, so I changed it to the tires just to keep it from looking like a flat uniform surface basically oh okay i i like it it looks really good i thought maybe there would be some advantage to friction or something like that but uh not really it actually causes problems <laughs> oh great but that's okay and then we've got a control panel up here that mm -hmm. obviously will close this but it's got a few other things that it does too i know yeah so do you like do you want me to just bring the elevator down now, or do the first deck and then elevator? Uh, let's do the first deck and then the elevator. Right, so, um, yeah, it's pretty sealed up. Like, it's not perfectly sealed. There's some things that I would prefer to have mods for. I tried to keep the mods to a minimum. Wow. So this is the main cargo area, and there's lights, right? Yeah, so this is the first cargo deck. And there are lights, but Space Engineers has limitations on the number of lights in a single frame. Yeah. For reasons. It does. So there might be some flickering. That's okay. If you close this front ramp... Oh, the ramp. Yeah. yeah. It automatically turns off the lights, and then it locks this thing here. I'll turn on my own lights. It actually locks it in place with a giant um, landing gear, which I think is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's, um, so if anybody's familiar with having subgrids on moving ships, they tend, even though if you turn the, the, all the rotor settings to max and lock it and everything, uh, the new physics system will still let them move at high G turns. So that prevents it from flapping open and breaking yeah. in a turn. It's a good idea. So then, if you want to bring down the elevator... I have to lower the ramp. Oh, you can't bring down the elevator without lowering the lamp. Nope, it's a safety feature. Oh, okay, cool. To keep it from to keep it from colliding, it shuts off the elevator if the ramp is down. Okay. Or if the ramp is closed, and then also uh, when the elevator comes down, it shuts off the ramp, so the ramp can't be closed while the elevator's down. Wow. Now, are you doing this all with timers or scripts or? Uh, yeah, I like to use timer blocks to keep the. the control panel clean. So then this is entirely small block elevator, mm -hmm. which is using a mixture of large and small pistons, which is pretty cool. Yep. So yeah, hit it. Let's go up. All right. So here we go. 
And then you can see there's a th uh, third button here that's on the actual piston. Yeah, and that actually doesn't show up until, or it's it's there, but you yeah, can't reach you it can't. unless you're at the top, which I thought yeah. was kind of cool. And that just opens these doors. So the the top deck is smaller than the bottom deck in terms of height. So this one is mostly for like actual bulk cargo, not really like vehicles. Oh sure. So you, so you can get vehicles in here. I can see smaller vehicles, you know, maybe drones or that kind of thing. And uh, as you can see, all the decks have these orange bars of small grids running along them. Yeah, I saw those. I was wondering about them. So these are for when you have, like, loose cargo up here. Um, mm -hmm. In order to, like, transport them, you'll want it secure. So these bars basically allow you to build uh, restraining straps or braces or whatever off of them. Oh, so you could actually you could actually put on like a landing gear attached to that and then push something into it and lock it in. Yeah, or, landing gear, rotors, uh, connectors, merge blocks. Whatever it takes. This other door back here um, is basically an airlock. Uh, you can pressurize this room here, but not the room behind there. I really need to keep my lights on. Do you have and lights so back this here? One, um, you might find interesting. Oh, there's something going on up here. Mm-hmm. So this is actually an aircraft hangar. Okay. And it has a telescoping roof. Oh, wow. Okay. I didn't see this the first time I went through it in my series. This is why I wanted to come back and do a separate tour, because I knew there was going to be things that I hadn't seen. That's really cool. That entire roof is made out of small blocks. Mm -hmm. And then you've got you've got rotors attaching the small blocks to the large blocks. And then you've got two sets of pistons. No, three. Hang on, is that yep. three sets of pistons? Okay, so it's two doors controlled by four pistons. Mm-hmm two each. That's crazy. And awesome. And you've still got the whole lighting system like strung up in there. Mm -hmm. And it all moves and, like, with the doors. Yeah, which is why like the light is, is kind of sporadic back here cuz well, it's understandable. Got to have got to ha have the like room for the distance to this time. <laughs> That's insane. And I noticed there's yet another door at the far end of this. Um, there's also another stairwell here. Where? Which you can just, you don't even have to jump over them. You just walk. <laughs> okay. And, and where does this just, go? Uh, so through here is an airlock, obviously. And then yep. it just runs along the side of the, the cargo bay. Oh, okay. And we're back to the cargo bay where we originally entered. Mm-hmm. And then this, oh, this literally is an upper area yeah, above catwalk. that cargo bay. That's crazy. Continuing on. So this is the upper maintenance access, and it mostly allows you to access the thruster um, okay. section, the dump drive, and the aft cat, the oh, catwalks. Oh, because we have six. Is it just six? <laughs> Um, no, there's a lot. More than that. I had a feeling. Like, oh, yeah, there we go. There's yeah. The these are all the here. ridiculous quantities of jump drives. Let me go around this way. Oh my word. Okay. Also, I want to point out the interior thrusters. So I saw a few left and right thrusters, and I knew that that couldn't be enough. Yeah. And that's because we've got a whole bunch on the inside as well. And I see that and you've spaced them all so that they don't actually damage anything. Yeah, so there's no thruster damage. You don't have to turn thruster damage off. So. Yeah. Okay. And so, and like, then, down here's the engine room. You want to go there first. Yeah, so I see lots of large reactors. Mm -hmm. There's eight large reactors, or are there more hiding around somewhere? 
Nope, this is it. Eight, and then a bunch of batteries. Okay. But that's for reserve. It's just the number of jump drives. Holy cow. Yeah. That's insane. Okay, and then what's down here? Oh, some... It's just space. Okay. What are we on? The... Um, so we are in the tail section. No, no, no. What is or, this or, or... block I'm standing on? It is two plates of catwalk that have been ground down and then oh, rotated to the and ro the hex. Okay, that's a cool idea. I that's that's neat. Sorry, I I I'm impressed by little things. It, that's that's genius. Just putting two catwalks in opposite directions. That's that's good. Yeah, it's the engineering bulkhead. So like, if you need to like, if you want to. Uh, let's see, we're immersively change something out in here. You can bring it into there. If you want to what? Immersively. Immersively? Change out, uh, yeah, so like if you want to like bring a constructed uh, reactor or jump drive or something in. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Rather than just like put down a block and roll it up. <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And so there's additional braking thrust on the roof. I see that, and I see a gravity generator. Is that your gravity generator for the ship? That's the one for the back of the ship. <laughs> oh, because you because you need two. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. And then this would be the way that you would walk in. Hmm. Okay. From the lower deck. Or are we down? Yeah, we down the lower deck. It's really easy to get lost in this ship. So the all the way over there, that's the elevator. And, okay. I'm trying not to get too lost. There's one other thing in the engineering section. Okay. Well, I guess two other things. So back here, obviously, is where the batteries are. Batteries. The lower thrusters. But if you're wondering what this turned off one is, it's an extra, just to make it Look oh, <laughs> so you have so you've got eighteen timer blocks, but you only need seventeen. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, and then this is using the small block timer block or the small timer block on a rotor trick, which I have mm, done but, myself many a time. Yep, that's where I got it from. Oh, you got it from me? Yeah. <laughs> ah, nice. <laughs> and then up here, the last thing is the. Uh, Exterior thruster maintenance access. Oh, okay. Oh, so this is kind of behind all of the um, hydrogen, hydrogen tanks. tanks. Yeah, and then it walks out into the thruster cone. Okay, and then this is back out into... Yeah, yeah I see. And then there's, a, there's a door at the end, too. Not that it does anything. <laughs> yeah, that really doesn't do anything at all. I'm going to let you lead the way a, so I don't get lost. It's a big ship, but a lot of it is cargo. True. The long journey forward. <laughs> um, this catwalk actually is really useful when you have a full load of cargo because it's difficult to get through in between everything in the deck. Um, so this is where, like, there's a lot of room for other people to do stuff. So obviously if you go straight ahead, there's the upper decks, okay, but, want... um, if you go down, uh -huh. lot, it goes along the, uh, the mouth, obviously. Yeah, I was just looking to, in there. Oh, there we go. This is open so you can see down. Okay. Yeah. And then the forward compartment is just empty because I don't oh. want to overload the ship with stuff. Okay. But like, if you wanted to put like personal uh, cabins or other things with small grid decks, you could do it in here. Or if you really wanted more jump drives, you know, you could just fill that in. Yeah, just you know, one hop between all the planets. <laughs> After you. So this is the passenger decks. Yeah. I like uh, how you have signs so, everywhere. Yeah. It's easier to not get lost. All right, and here is where we have our <laughs> like room for how many people? <laughs> uh, three a lot. times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Three times seven times two. 
so a lot. Yeah. M more than you could fit on a server. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely true. And then we've got all of this for driving. Uh, these are mostly decorative, but if you had a crew and you wanted to go into combat, you could set up all the missile turrets to be controlled through various stations. So, so this is the cryo bay area. Yep. With plenty of cryo space. Oh, and then and here the you've got room. medical room. Piped into oxygen, hydrogen, I assume? Yep. Should be. Uh, um, and then... That's pretty much it for the top decks. I mean, there's airlocks to the sides. Where does this go? Obviously. Oh! I want to oh, see yes. this room, too. Yeah. So this is the forward slash top side engineering space. So, if you think this is a lot of gyros, you have no idea. This is a lot of gyros. It is absolutely insane how many gyros you have to have on this ship. Yeah, and then obviously you can see the uh, hovering thrusters. Yeah, Love so these you. internal thrusters are actually what keep it aloft. So, this thing is amazing. I want to fly it. Alright. I'm going to crash it. Woohoo. Oh my word. Okay, let's take a look. My goodness, there's so much on the panel here. Mm -hmm. So, number one is a timer block. What does that do? So that raises the aft landing gear. Inertial dampeners on, and then landing gear off, and then I should, yeah, spacebar. Look at that. That's funny. You can't you can't actually zoom out in third person mode enough to see the whole ship. You can if you stick your camera directly behind the rear thrusters. Right, because it forces it out. Yeah. Yeah, but if you're a little bit high, it'll it'll kind of zoom itself back in. And so there's a known issue with the mod at the moment. For some reason, the hydrogen thrusters don't like to work unless there's 100% power usage. Interesting. Yeah. So we're not getting a whole lot of forward thrust at this point for that reason, I assume? Oh, no, we are. Like, you can see, we're already oh. over 100 meters a second. There we go. Oh, you're right. It just feels slow because of the size. So I do have a speed mod installed um, that will allow us to go 200 meters a second. And that is what we are doing right now. I am trying to tip downward, and it is oh so slowly working. And I am going to turn off thrusters, all of them, because I want to see how this thing does with just its wings. I want to tip it up because it does continue to turn. We are losing atmosphere. We are losing altitude fast. All right, but you say that this thing is actually capable of getting into space, huh? Mm -hmm. My other question is, can it do a barrel roll? Uh, you can try. Also, not a barrel roll, an aileron roll, I think. Something like that. It's it's yeah. Otherwise, I know that there are pilots that watch my videos. And they don't like it when I say barrel roll. So one thing I found to keep the hydrogen thrusters on is if you turn off six of the eight reactors, it'll keep oh. flying because it has plenty of power. Sure. With the batteries, but it'll keep the hydrogen thrusters on too. Well, I am managing to actually like do a full roll, which is kind of cool. Very slow roll. Very slow roll. You may occasionally see uh, dust coming from the aircraft hangar, and that's because the uh, the tires will trick the physics engine because of the, the grid's moving into thinking that you're driving the tires. 
Oh, I just saw a puff of smoke. I'm sure that that's from the tires. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm impressed. Shall we see what happens when we run it into an asteroid? Uh, sure, you can see what the range on the jump drives is too. Ooh, good point. All right, so in theory, we can go three kilometers. Really? That's it? You sure it isn't three thousand kilometers? It is three thousand kilometers. Thank you. That's. <laughs> I was looking at that, seeing 3,059. I thought, oh, it's only three. Yeah, wow. Yes. It's interesting. It's kind of off center like that. Nice. And that brought us a lot closer to these asteroids, which is what I wanted, because I want to run into it. Bad things happen. Yeah, Clang just had a field day with all the subgrids. <laughs> That's the best. I'm actually impressed with how well that handled that. And there are lots of little bits and pieces all over the place, but still. Oh, wow, the rear... Oh, no, never mind. <laughs> I thought the rear cargo hold was still pressurized, but... Nah, there's a big old hole. Well, Alice, you have done an incredible job, and you have put a lot of hours into this, and it is looks to me to be well worth it. It's impressive. Yeah, thanks. It's, uh, she's a beast. Yeah? Uh, yeah, she's survival ready. I mean, it's slightly impractical, I guess, to use in survival, because, I mean, it's oh, massive. The like, amount of like, stuff you'd need. Yeah, trying to fill the cargo bay just with green shots is like, I don't have enough stuff to put in it. <laughs> you did a pretty good job in my survival series where you actually have like vehicles and cargo containers and all kinds of things. It, it, yeah. It looks, it looks really good. It looks live. It looks like, you know, like it's being actively used. And I really, I really liked the way you uh, staged it. It, it looked good. So. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching this little tour of the Whale King. I highly encourage you to go subscribe to it. You'll see a, um, a link down in the description straight to this blueprint on the workshop, as well as a link to my survival series. You should definitely check that out. It's being created by my patrons little by little, and I'm just kind of exploring the world and, and discovering it as they create it, and I'm having a whole bunch lot of fun and this was one of the items that showed up at an airport and I just was so impressed I asked Alice if she would give me a better tour because I just couldn't see the whole thing in in one episode so hit the thumbs up button and if you have a second to say some nice things to Alice about the ship then please do so in the comments below anything you want to say Alice yeah, thanks. Thanks for checking it out. <laughs> and there you go. So I'll see you next time on Epic Tech. Say nice things, eh? Like, uh, geez, I don't think you built it. <laughs> huh, Epic? Huh? Huh? Hey, that was a nice thing. <laughs> it's too good. I thought, I, I didn't think you had that much free time in your life. <laughs>